Hi, I'm Donna Dewberry. I'm in the Platt studio for the final lesson of the year. We've been doing hometown painting all year long from churches and barns and your next door neighbor's front door and even looking outside your window. So you know what? For many of you, I know it's snowy and cold, especially up north. And I thought looking outside this window to a landscape for December, sharing with you beautiful frosty snow, trees way back in the forest, and looking at um, a tree with bark on it, snow sitting on our evergreens. I just think we're gonna have so much fun learning all these techniques because I'm thrilled to share them with you today. I'm also thrilled that Plaid has made a wonderful kit for our Folk Art One Stroke Hometown Program. This is a great Let's Paint series, and this series is available in a kit that Plaid's put together. I'd like to invite you to pladonline.com forward slash Let's Paint section of our website, and then go to Hometown. So I'm excited to share the kit with you this year. It's got a painted folder by me, so that inside that folder, you can put the 12 reusable teaching guides that are gonna help you with all lessons all year. You also have the Folk Art Multi-Surface Paint, which is luscious and wonderful. You're gonna love it. Along with the Folk Art One Stroke Painting Brushes. And we have something new this year. We have templates and patterns that are gonna help this program go really easy for you during each lesson. So doesn't that sound fun? It's got supplies that you can open up and use the minute you start your lesson. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to go in that warm plaid studio and let's start our lesson. cozy sitting in my studio ready to paint this fun winter scene and I want you to look at how we have the wall to your home then we have the window style looking through the glass to see the beautiful winter forest and the outside here and to get started with this one of the most important parts is having this window frame all even and straight and that um, sometimes is difficult for me. So I wanna show you some little tricks that helps me make it easier. And so let's move this to the side and let's see what, exactly what's gonna happen. I want you to get your supplies first. So if you look at your reusable teaching guide and this is in your hometown kit. And so when you look at each teaching guide for each month, I have on here the Folk Art Multi-Surface Paint Colors, and today we're going to be using Wicker White, Prussian Blue, Licorice, Sap Green, Burnt Umber, Moon Yellow, and Yellow Ochre. Then we're going to use Floating Medium, and that's the Folk Art Floating Medium, and we use that instead of water. And so that's very important that you have it. And then our One Stroke Brushes, we're going to be using the 3 quarter and the number 12 Flats. And then we're going to use a half inch scruffy and a number two script liner. And all of that should be easy to find right in your kit. Now we have the step by steps on this reusable teaching guide that are going to take you through the trees and the forest, the, how we shade the blue on the snow. All the shading samples are there ready for you. How we put the snow on top of the branches and a cut off tree there and bark and the evergreens. And then we have some muted background and you could put all that in around the trees and the sun rays and all that fun uh, the fun elements that we're going to put into our piece. Okay, so now I want to get ready and share with you some simple steps to make it easy for us to transfer this window onto the wall here, onto our canvas. First of all, we need a piece of tracing paper and it needs to be pretty close to the 16 by 20 page because we want the whole entire window and not piece it, okay? And then what we want to do is go to your hometown kit and get the templates of page 13 and 14 and page 16. And so then we will be prepared to start. We also need a ruler 
and you can use a metal, a see-through plastic ruler, or a T-square, which is really nice. Um, and sometimes if I weren't using the T-square, I leave my tracing paper in my pad because then it has an edge that I can run the T-square along. We want to then take and place each one of these pieces as we get started. And to do this, you would probably tape this and make sure that it is gonna be secure. And so I find a place to tape it. So on this one, probably, because we're bringing it right here, I tape the side and then I can just lift it and move it in place, okay? So what we're gonna then do is take your ruler and go around along the straight lines here. Now I used to just freehand it thinking it would be fine, but we need it really precise and each time you trace it onto your piece, you need to go back to your ruler even on top of your already traced lines. You want it to be a nice clean look. So now let me show you before we move that, see the arch here? It's right in this diagram. And in this diagram, it's telling you what you're gonna need. It even tells you to go to page 13 and 14, so don't be confused, it's gonna say it right here. Then uh, you put the two A's at the top and the two B's at the bottom. So we're gonna go to page 13, and right here, look for the A, and then we're gonna put the A's at the top. It's the upper half of the window, and right here, it explains to you more, and that makes it very easy for you. So now we wanna, it's very important that we line this up really good. And I'm gonna come and make sure my left side center is all straight. And each time, don't forget, each time we're gonna take this ruler and we're gonna get all of our vertical lines. So I start here and I move over, then I move over. So if you had a T-square, you could just slide it over too. So whichever is easier for you. All right, and you just come all across here with your permanent marker and make those happen. Then you do your horizontal lines. Now we've already done this one when we did the first part of the pattern and then we're just gonna come along here. So the thing that we're gonna do next is we're gonna take this one out and we're gonna flip it over to B. You're gonna see that this line's right back up under here and you're gonna repeat that whole process, okay? Because the upper line's already drawn, we're just gonna go to this bottom line. And there we are. So we have a really nice pattern, clean. And it's real important to keep this nice and clean so that when you're wanting to reuse it, you have it. And I like to take and fold these in the quarters and put them in a manila, manila folder or envelope and then you have the picture on the front of it and then you can get right back to it each time. Okay, so the supplies I need next is we need graphite paper, painter's tape, and our stylus. So what we're gonna do is tape this down where you want it on your canvas. I made sure I had like three fingers at the bottom and just, oh, just so I come down enough that looks good at the top. And then I was able to put this across about two times and able to get everything in here. Okay, so. I'm going to make sure that we have it all up here really good. Now this is important. This is what I was just sharing with you a minute ago. What we wanna do is go back to those lines and I do something. I trace this on so I know where the wall is and where the window's gonna be. And I go ahead and lightly trace on the uh, styles and the window panes and the reason I do that is I want to see where the trees are going to be. And I want to make sure, like, I'm going to try to make sure I don't chop off the top of a tree or some element that needs to show. So now we're going to start transferring all the lines. And, and you're running this right along the ruler. And that's going to give you a nice line. So what I want you to see is I want you to check and make sure that the line's coming out well. And I don't know if I made that clear, the shiny part of the graphite paper goes down and the matte side comes up, okay? And we're going to trace the whole piece on. So that's a simple step, but an important step, all right? Now what's gonna happen is I have traced this, uh, transferred this all on. So we have it all there ready to go. And the next thing we need to do is go back to our teaching guide which is gonna share uh, show with you and put our 
sample right back here again so we can see the color that we're looking for. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix the color we want for the interior wall of your house because we're looking out. So, and this one, I chose blue for where I wanna put this in my house. So you can make this color any color that matches your home. And so I wanna share with you how I mix the colors to get where I wanna be. All right, so the first thing that I did was I'm gonna put out some Prussian blue. And as a deep value of blue, it's wonderful because it can go from very light to very dark and give you some really yummy shades. I then want it to be a little bit lighter. Now, so, Usually I'll start with the white and keep adding the darker into it, but on this I just want to, I might even need more, but I want to put a little bit of white to get a lighter blue. And then I'm going to add some burnt umber because I want um, more of a federal blue, a little different shade of blue than bright, and so our light blue. All right, so now I'm going to dampen my three quarter inch brush and I'm gonna start mixing. So I'm gonna pick up white and I can use a lot of white. I just wanna be careful not to use a whole bottle <laughs> of white as I'm trying to mix our color. Okay. So keep it in an area so it doesn't dry out fast on you because we want to have enough that we don't have to keep mixing this. And I'm going to bring a little bit more brown in here. So burnt umber, Prussian blue, wicker white. All right, so we're trying to get enough made. So it kind of looks a little muted blue. All right, so get it out of the brush too because I have a lot of blue left in the brush. Okay, so you can hold this over, but I just want you to stroke it out and see if you like the color. That's what's most important. All right, now what we want to do, I do pull a little bit of floating medium in because what I want to this to move for me easier and sometimes as it's thinned out like this it will start drying up a little bit on me. All right so I'm going to wipe off the excess on this brush because I've been mixing it I have a lot of paint on my brush. I'm going to work in just a little bit of medium and I want to make sure as I'm coming along here that I realize the more I get it into the white, which I'm hoping not to do much, uh, the more it's harder with the white to cover, all right, to cover that blue that you got in there. And you, then you just, one thing I do is I run my little finger on the outside edge, and so I get it going where I want it, and all I do is hold the brush steady, and I'm pulling my little finger. See this? A little finger going here helps you get it all base coated in easier. All right, so I'm gonna come back here. And I'm gonna start out away from here because I don't want a big heavy ridge of blue. So if I work it in a little bit here and get it going and then pull my little finger again, see how nice we can get this on the outside edge. Now the other little trick that we do and it's up to you what's comfortable. I'm gonna show you both because I think I think it um, is good for you to see there's options. All right, so I'm gonna base coat this in, solid over here, all up and down movements, not a bunch of little pads, okay? Unless you have a faux finish wall and you want it that way. But what I wanna do is show you that you can put painter's tape on these straight edges. So now I'm gonna take my painter's tape and I'm gonna go right along the inside of the window and then I am going to do a little step that a lot of people forget to do and that is you need to rub really good along here and get this down really well before you start painting. All right, now I did um, 
do this, I'll show you again that we do some of this look as we're doing the center panes in here when we do white, because sometimes that helps me do a better job. Okay, so see I'm going right along this edge really good. And the key is when you use the painter's tape and you're working on here, is that we pull it while it's wet. This is a three quarter inch brush. I don't know if I told y'all I'm using my three quarter inch to put this on. And then I pull it and you can see I have a few little spots where I wasn't pushed down perfect. Sometimes I use an old room key or credit card and just rub it along there to make sure. But you can come right here and with a little bit of a dampened brush if you have a few of those spots. But it's just easier to get a straight line. Okay, so I want you guys to go and finish painting all around your window and come back and we'll be ready to paint our landscape on the inside. All right, so I've grabbed the pencil so that I can start laying out my background landscape, background of the landscape. And one of the things is I had some swooping snow bank across here and then lots of trees. I'm going to freehand those trees with you, but see a little bit. I want to make sure y'all can see that where the snow bank goes right there. And then it's going to come in here and go up into these evergreens. Okay. So on the right side, I came in here and this is like a chopped off tree. And so it just has snow on top of it, but above it right in here. So that's about three fingers up. We are going to start bringing a tree all the way up the side here. So I'm going to then see if we have this, run my little finger here so I can have it about the same distance. And then up here, I noticed that I started coming over and if, look at this right here, here's half. So always look, when your eyes are looking at this and deciding pattern wise, I'm always getting the center first and then I can even get the center of the center. Uh, of the right side, but I notice that I'm just a little bit over from the center. So if I come here, then it's going to help you lay this out and come down a little bit. All right. So I want this branch come in here and curve up a little bit. And then I split this here also where it's a bigger section of tree and then it goes off to the side. So then I can skip up here and have some more branches going here. All right, this just makes it a little bit more interesting. So then you're going to continue this here and up and up into this section. So see why I like the, the panes drawn in or, or transferred here so that it just helps me get, make sure I have a point of a branch out there because there's no greenery on most of this and there's snow. And so I want it really interesting so I can put the snow on here. Then everything else that's coming into this tree, except right down here, I have a little bit of branching in here and a little bit coming out from there. Okay, now all this lead you can scrub with your paintbrush with paint and it just blends it out. So it's not going to mess up your painting. I don't want to leave it on uh, the styles and then paint white because it shows through. The white sometimes, a few coats, it still shows through. All right, so now we're going to um, paint tall, really faded. Look at this really faded. These are way in the back because the snowstorm's there. And then some thin ones here, and then more that go off the top, which means they're just really tall in the background, which means that makes these look like they're really far away. And this looks like it's a little closer. You get that feeling? This one's close enough that you see that the bark and all on it. And then these guys, these evergreens are right in front. So what I like to do is at this point, I do like, just so I see where it's going to be, I like to come up with just 
a strong trunk for the evergreen, just so I know where it's going to be. All right, and it's important that these are straight. Sometimes I get done and go, oh, why did I not get that straight? Now this is almost two fingers over, and I just want one taller than the other. All right, now I need this to be over because I want to get half of these limbs showing so it just looks better, okay, in our design here. So then I am, watch this, at this point I'm going from the center trunk, see this? It is really three spread fingers, all right? And you can also, when you're looking at that, also look at where it's halfway. All right, and so it's just over from halfway. So here's halfway. We're just going to come right over here, or three spread fingers, and I'm going to make this one a little bit taller than the first one. Okay, and I came down too far on this guy. All right, so they're all about there. So these step back a little bit, and this one's back too. All right, so now we're ready to start adding some color in here. And what I want to do is pull out the multi-surface colors that we're going to use in here. So these are folk art multi-surface. You're going to love them. When you get this on here and it dries with the sealer that's in it, you're going to love that we can just take a paper towel and wipe it off because this is all sealed and dry. So it's important to let that dry before we start. Now, what we're going to be using first is we're going to go to our teaching guide, our reusable teaching guide. And we're going to look here at the sun rays, and it's telling us to use a three-quarter inch flat brush and our wicker white and our moon yellow, and I use a touch of floating medium in there. So we're going to put these yellow tones all in the back. And see, I'm showing you movement there and movement here of the snow drifts that come in. So we are going to always keep that by you so you're seeing am i getting this color because look at the color i put a swatch there so you see each color that we're trying to achieve and so just kind of match it up and make sure we've got it so this has been dampened laid on the paper towel so we get the excess moisture out of it we're going to pick up moon yellow and we're going to pick up wicker white all right so i'm going to get more wicker white all right, now what you really need is to have plenty of floating medium because I don't want it a heavy painting. I want to get a nice, soft look. Now we're going to come around here, and I'm not worrying about the styles in the middle because I'm going to just repaint those. But I'm needing this yellow mix to come across. Now this is very bright right now, but what I want you to see is later on you're going to see that I'm going to make a mix and do like a snow stormy white, white out, as you would say, that goes over this and it will tone it down. So if you're looking at this and saying, wow, Donna, that's really bright. Now I am going in the direction that I'm going to have the light coming here. And hopefully you'll get some of that when the painting's all done and feel like, wow, that's a sun ray from the side there. Okay, I'm going to continue to get the white, a little bit of the wicker white, the moon yellow, and floating medium. Okay, so all along here just in case some of it peeps through the evergreens there. Okay, so let's just pick up some more wicker white and some more medium because it's really pretty yellow here. Now you might notice as you're doing this on your piece that the lead lines are fading or smearing a little bit. And I'm not worried about that because I know on every area of that we are going to be painting more paint. And so it really won't show. Okay. So, I'm going to put my paint back over here. 
All right. So now all of this looks way brighter than this. And, but it's closer to this. And that's what you're supposed to be worrying about. Not worrying, that's what you're supposed to be looking at for right now. Okay, so, and like I said, I do do a whitewash when we're all done. And you're going to go, oh no, <laughs> you're going to coat all my trees and all, but it works wonderful. I promise. Okay. So there we go, we've got that in, and it's important that depending on how we paint that you see some of that glow from the sun trying to get through that snowstorm, okay? Now let's see what's next. I'm gonna do trees and then the snow drift. So if we look over here, um, the first background trees are a number 12 flat, so you can use both, the number 12 or a three quarter, but the number 12 gives us this really slender little trees that I want. So a number 12 flat with wicker white and a touch of licorice to create a medium gray. Oh guys, and so those are all in here. So I'm gonna take this wicker white and we're gonna put it right over here with the licorice. Okay, and just touch the licorice. And I touched a little too much. I really just barely touched it, and look at that. Okay. So what we're going to do here is all in this area where this snow bank is. That is just too much paint. All right, so I raked off a little bit. I'm going to come in here. Now watch what I do. I'm going right over the styles. All right, and then I come up here and I do some little branches that come off of this, all on the chisel of this brush. This is 12 flat. We're going on the chisel of the brush. I don't need floating medium because I have enough paint. So just think about that. If you have enough paint, this flows nicely. But normally I would have floating medium if I'm trying to do a long stroke. Now I wet and taken this off and what I'm gonna do is clean my styles of that wet line and it's okay if it's just yellow there, but if we leave the gray tones, it will be streaked. So we just clean it up a little bit, all right? Just so it's just not a heavy line. All right, now what I'm gonna do is do the same thing again with gray tones using my three quarter, all right? So you see how those, looks like, those look like thin little trees way in the distance? So I can put just a touch of maybe burn umber. Tone it down just a little bit. You can look in here. Um, I put just a little bit. Um, I'm putting a little bit of burn umber, but right here I just use mostly gray. So I guess when I put the yellow on it, it made me feel like it had burn umber. Okay, so we're gonna then come in here and I'm gonna do some larger trees and they're gonna be in the background over here. See how thick that paint is? I'm gonna use some floating medium and just thin it out some. That's pretty strong. We're gonna go off the top. I can come up here because I want to have a few that show up here and some branches. All right. I got a, a little heavy on there. I want you to see it's real easy to take care of that. If I use my dampen brush, I'm gonna take off a little bit of this first one. So you just come with that dampen brush and just wipe some of it off. And I have a little bit over here. Now in here, I want you to see that as you pull a tree here, you're gonna Y off of that tree with another limb. 
and that's what we did here, but it's a Y, all right? Whenever you add any of those, they're Ying off. All right, so we're in the forest, but those are gonna look like they're way far back. Clean off a little bit in here. There we go. And let's get it off of here. This is just a water dampened brush. I have used floating medium to take those off before if I waited too long. Just so it's not harsh because the white will cover it well. Okay, so what I want to share with you is that these aren't just straight sticks. You see they have movement, all right? So that's the first thing I've done, and that's all the background. Now, I want to come in here, and remember the other trees are the foreground. So while I have some of this paint on my brush, I've just tapped it on here, but I want to go back to my teaching guide because I actually can get a better look. I was just going to start with some of this, which you can. You can put a few on that already loaded brush that we were doing our trees with. You can tap it, but let's go over here and pick up our scruffy brush, and it's a half inch dry scruffy with that same gray mix. And so I'm going to come right here. Let's put a little bit of the wicker white. I had a little bit of floating medium, a little bit of this gray mix. Clean this off into there because we're gonna get a different look with the scruffy. And the scruffy you're gonna pounce Hear that? Pouncing. And then you're gonna come over here and pounce. Now it looks a little bit like it's yellow here, but that's just because we're trying to give you color so you can see the scruffy on this white teaching guide. Okay, reusable guide. So practice that and see if you're liking the color because if it's way dark, this gives you a good opportunity to not have it too dark before we put it on here. So then I just came in when you look at my picture, you'll see there's some spots that just need a little bit of muted shadows on the trees. All right. Okay, just a little bit in there. And when we put the white wash, everything is going to be toned down even there again. A little bit in here. Trying to keep that from bouncing. <laughs> okay. All right, so that's a dry scruffy. Remember, no water. All right, I don't want you to mess up your piece by doing uh, water on that scruffy. And then you dry that scruffy out so it's ready for next time you use it, okay? And then I'm gonna go back to my three quarter. Okay, so now what I wanna do is I wanna bring in some snow drifts. And so uh, you can look right here, it tells you which brush we're using our three quarter. I'm gonna get some more of the wicker white since I've used it up a lot. And then we are going to pick up this clean three quarter inch that's been wet and dried off a little bit. And we're going to take real nice, soft, Movements now that see the the yellow mix kind of shows through here We're gonna come all the way where the the brown the four trees are gonna be But see what's nice about this is that you can still see where my trees are supposed to go all right And I could pick up a teeny bit of Prussian blue Okay and go ahead and add a little bit of that in the drift. Okay. And I'm gonna go ahead and pick up more wicker white and a little bit more blue to be under underneath the Prussian blue here, underneath the evergreens that we're gonna put there. Now we're gonna darken the blue areas a little bit more later, but I just want, like right here, I'm gonna pick up a little bit more of straight Prussian blue and some floating medium and come along here. 
This is just underneath areas that I want the background. All right. And we will float some more of that in there later. All right, so just a teeny bit of gray tone along here, that gray mix we made. And see, you can see the yellow mix through there. All right, now we'll put more detail, stronger whites in there a little bit later. All right. All right, so I'm gonna, I've got clean brush here. I wanna take away this blue with a nice clean line here with the water. It's still quicker uh, to do this. Another thing I do, guys, is I will take and tape this whole piece so many times when I'm doing a landscape so that I don't even touch these, um, white styles and molding on the outside edge. But with this, um, it's harder to tape around an arch. Okay, so let's now take off some of this snow drift that's right in here. Okay, so I'm gonna prep you for what's gonna happen next. This is a good point for you to stop and finish your drifts and your trees and your shading of the branches, the gray shading up here that we put with the scruffy brush. And then I would like you to dry your piece and come back for the white mix that we're going to put over the background. Okay. Okay, so now that we're all dry, we're going to take a foam plate and put a good amount of floating medium. All right, and then I'm going to get wicker white. All right, so actually, I got a lot of wicker white, but mostly I want this much wicker white and a lot of floating medium. Now this is the key. If you put a whole, if you put a whole lot of white, it's gonna be way too much. So you test it out, lighter's better. <laughs> so if you start out lighter, oops, let me take this off here. We don't wanna get into the blue. But if we do a little bit of light first, then it's okay to keep adding some white but I'd rather you do a little bit at a time rather than a lot at once. Now, we're still working, guys, from the very back. All right, now this is my little trick, is if I have to lighten every single thing, if I have to lighten the trees really light, if I have to lighten the yellow to the perfect tone, it, it just takes a lot more um, work and effort. But I've found, like I've done trees all on the top of a waterfall and the fox come in, and what I did was, Wow, how am I going to get all those light greens to be the color I want them to be? And then I just put a white glaze over everything, and it just took it down so it looked exactly like fog. So landscape's fun, and there's fun tricks that we can share, you, share with you along the way. And one is, it just takes us down a little bit by putting... I just got too much white, I bet. No, I'm okay. Okay, so remember it's a winter storm and we want to just um, a white cast on here and then we're going to uh, flick it, fly spec it, as Chris calls it. We're going to fly spec it and look like snow coming down. And some of that I can put on top of the trees so I don't have to do that now. Even if it's part of the background, it can be the whole, on the whole canvas. We just have to be careful when we do that, not to get it on the walls of the inside of the house, right? Okay, so see how nice that is? And you still see everything, but we're going to enrich this part in here so it's really close to us and it looks like it's close to us. The beauty of this paint that we use is that 
if I put this on and it's just way too white and I kept building it thinking I needed it, not happy with the color, the beauty of it is while it's still wet and damp and the medium's gonna keep it a little wet for you, wet your paper towel and just wipe it off and then do it over so it's fine. But if you let it totally dry, guys, it doesn't wipe off. So when I tell people they can wipe it off, they think, oh, I'll just let it sit and I'll come back if I'm not happy, but that's not true, it's gotta be damp. All right, so let's go to our next step. And our next step is let's move forward on our painting. And what we're gonna need is to do the brown, darker brown trees with bark, the ones that are close. All right, so what I want to do first is I want to work on this brown tree. And I'm going to move this a little bit out of the way so that we can see. Let's move it totally out of the way. And let's practice this tree and the chisel edges and how we're making this happen. All right, so when you're looking at this, we're... Um, the tree and the tree bark is a number 12 flat. The more that we're concentrate on more detail, we use the smaller flat brushes. All right, so if you look down here, like this area in front of the tree, it's got some gold in it. So I ended up putting some gold, um, which is that yellow ochre into the tree bark itself. So burnt umber and a touch of yellow ochre. And then we're going to pull flat as we put it in here and then chisel the bark. All right, so I can come in here and split my brush in the double loader. All right, and then I come over here and work it in and I go pressure and quick back and forth. All right, so I need a little bit more ye yellow ochre. Now what happens is I want you to see that we're getting paint inside those bristles. Not that I want you to be quick and fast, just to be fast. I want you to do that at first to work it into the brush bristles. Then from then on, we need plenty of paint, so we're gonna pick up more, and then we just flatten the paint. Before, we're pushing really hard, is squeezing paint out, but working it in. From then on, as I pick it up, I might just need to dip occasionally, but you have to dip, and you're only worrying about the color on the surface of the bristles. All right, so as I'm coming down here, I can come down and fill in how, whatever size the tree is, okay? And same thing along here. But then I'm working up on the chisel. So if I'm up on the chisel, I'm going to see these little guys here. They Y off of the main tree like I showed you before. I'm gonna chisel here and then I'm gonna Y off of here. Now, some of the big areas of the branches, you can make a little scoop down in there and then Y off. Like right here, after I get the branches, I still like to come in sometimes and make it not just look like two sticks like that. You just come right in here and scoop it and pull it back down into the big tree. Okay, so let's get a little bit more burn umber. And so what's going to happen, let's do yellow ochre so you can see here better. But we're going to need the burn umber on our tree itself. All right, I didn't think you could see it as well, but we're going to come right here and get our bark. See that? Now that I've showed you how to put all the bark and all on the brown tree, so let's take the large brown tree, which is in front. Let's take, we've got to wipe off our teaching guide and do it one step at a time, all right? Because you can stop your video, go get your tree all on there just like you want it, and then come back and we'll learn the next step. Okay, so clean this off because this paint's made to stay. <laughs> so we want to take that off. All right, before it dries. All right, so let's look at our tree that we've drawn in here. Now, this is what I want you to do. That We've got a bigger area, so we're gonna pick up both colors, flatten them out, and then I'm gonna go in and just dip into some floating medium, flatten that out, and 
Let's start up here and stop where the style is, right? And then up here, a little bit. Okay, so now what you can see here is that I want to miss the style here. Remember how I said on the dark brown I don't want to go on to the style here because that will be a lot harder to cover with the white. All right, so then we're going to come and miss it and come down here. All right. And then we'll just put a few little branches. And so I'm missing those two styles. And I can just come in here. I'd almost rather go into it a little bit and go like that so it doesn't, it, it, um, one of my pet peeves is when people leave that big space all around their flowers and everything because they know something's gonna go there. It looks better if it looks like it was behind it. All right, so I'm gonna dip the two colors, uh, the yellow, ochre, and brown umber, and then dip floating medium, and then <clears throat> come right here and brush along the edge here. So see how we've got that yellow ochre um, showing pretty good there? That's gonna make it easy for us to do the bark. So I'm gonna hold this here again and pull down. I'm reaching too far, so I'd rather pull this up here so y'all can see, or I can see. All right, and then work that in. See how when you have it flat like that, I went right onto that white, so I'll clean it off. Okay, and we're gonna come right here a little bit. A little bit of branch there. And I'm going to stop right now before this dries on here. And I'm okay up here. It's just right here where I was not paying attention and talking to you guys. So I need to clean it up a little bit. And right here also. So it's easy fix. So people tell me all the time they like the little tricks that helps them where they don't think they... If they mess up, it doesn't ruin the whole piece. So that's just a fun little trick to show you. Remember the curve there. All right. I do have a little branch that comes up from here, and I don't see it under there. Let's come right up there. Okay, so now we just have to finish the bottom here. So we're gonna, I'm gonna turn it again so I can see better. All right, and we're gonna come down in here. And the tree gets a little bigger as you're down in here. Okay, so it already, see it looks kind of like it's got a little bit of bark. I wanted to call it barky, but it's not barky. All right, so look. Now, what I'm gonna do, I kinda like doing this when it's still wet. So let's come in here and let's chisel some of that bark look. Cause when it's still wet on the chisel like this, it'll pick up a little bit of that where you can see the um, yellow ochre popping through. Or like I said before, you can bring a little bit of yellow ochre back in if it's not showing well. And it just gives you more texture into the trunk. Isn't that kind of fun? Now we're gonna have snow um, fall in on, on top of those branches and all, which you won't see everything that we're doing now, but it's fun to go ahead and put it there in case it does show. All right, so right in here, I'm gonna put some little snow on top of those a little bit later. All right, so I kinda like the trunk to come a little bit 
like this so when the snow goes up on it you have little peaks of it piling up there okay so let's get our teaching guide for the next step and that is to do our stump in here so i put the stump and then the snow goes on top of it okay so and then some little rock areas or maybe those are more stumps too I just, um, when I saw this winter scene, they had some more dark brown in there. Okay, so let's get our guide before we start. And we're going to come right here. This gives you the color. Make sure you've got the right color. And then I'm going to, I just kind of pull down because it, it just shows enough with the snow on it that you can tell it's a trunk. And um, you can go like this just in case some of the top shows but see i took it from there to there showing you how that um, the snow is going to look on there and then i just came along here with just burn umber and made a little bit of a rock in here and then we put the snow on top of that so we're just going for a little bit of that look and I do the same things with rocks, just like that when we're putting water trailing over it or sprinkling over a waterfall or whatever. All right, so let's, let's come back in here. More yellow ochre, burnt umber. And I want this thick, so I wouldn't use floating medium at this point. I'm just coming along here, and this is in front of that evergreen, by the way. And so... Just like we did there, we can come here, remember, a little bit of that trunk here. And then I came right under here so you barely see all burn umber. So we have this rock here. And now I want to take and, well, I still have the burn umber, and put these, the trunks inside. And I dipped a little bit of wicker white instead of the yellow ochre. Not that you're gonna see much of that, it's all gonna be covered, but you do see that dark brown back there. And so I'm gonna show you right here. I'm still getting some more wicker white with the burn umber. And then, cause this color is still got the yellow ochre in it. All right, so now I'm gonna lead with the light, the wicker white and the burnt umber follows. All right, so you just practice this to make sure you get that nice stroke coming straight down. All right, and then we're ready to put the evergreen on there. So I'd like you to have a nice paper towel eraser that you can fold into fours, quarters, and then be able to wipe this off as you go. All right, and then we'll come back and we'll learn how to put this, uh, the greenery on those evergreens, all right, after we do our trunk. So I'm going to come right here, and I do want to skip this style and come back down here. And I don't know if you can see, but I can just see that in the background. All right, and, and the snow's on top of here, so you don't have to go all the way down to the stump. And the stump. Now over here, I can see where I started my tree, to my top of my tree, and then I can come down here. And I did get a little bigger here, made it a little bit larger. And then this one is higher. Remember, we want to pull it a little bit higher. And it is important when you get to that style that it looks like, that's where I said it looks like it kind of goes behind it instead of a gap. And then I can take my clean water brush and clean that off. So it's real straight there. And I'll do that with the evergreen also. So now we've done all the burn umber. See how I can clean that right? So then it's right on that line, but it doesn't look like you stopped. It looks like it's behind. All right, so now let's see what's gonna happen next here. So we are working on the um, 
all the evergreen first, and then we come back and put all the snow everywhere. So let's look at um, what we're using here. And it shares, it's a number 12 flat with sap green, and I did use a teeny bit of citrus green, or it depends on how dark you want yours, okay? So let's look on here. All right, I have little bits of lighter area in here, but this is mostly that dark sap green. And um, you could still have brown in the brush if you want to. So what we're gonna do is take and pick up just the sap on the whole entire brush. And I wanna practice on here. All right, so on the very top, that's when I have a little bit of burn umber in there. I'm gonna take and do these little strokes up here, little teeny strokes for the very, and make your tip really nice, okay? So right here, the top needs to have a nice point, and then we take a little bit of strokes onto it. Then we're gonna come down here and continue some of these come down, all right? Because we want it to be a point down here. All right, so I went flat. We don't want to be flat. All right, now I'm gonna put a touch of, of uh, citrus green into the sap green so you can see. Now you can pull all these points out and they're going to be darker on the paint painted surface than the this is like painting on glass it, you can see through it really well all right so i want to have some areas that go out and then some that are skipped and then we go out again just like a christmas tree and then we go out again and then those are perfect places to put your snow on top of those areas where you've skipped a little bit. So see, now we're going down and out. We're not, we're not going straight out, guys. All right, we're not doing that. And we're not swooping it totally up like this, all right? So it's down, but what makes it look good is um, we're doing areas that we don't fill in and that helps the whole look but you have to control yourself and it's hard for me because i just go for it and i'm having a good time and i'm like oh i got too big all right and so one of the things that you'll see it might be nice to do this one because some of it's covered all right so i'm gonna do that one first i can pick up a little bit of burn umber a little bit of sap green i want the nice point on the top and then i i want to control how much i stroke all right and the key is i really like the trunk to show sometime so i'm going to skip a little bit and each time i skip some I'm going to get a little larger, but I'm also going to come in the middle some. So every once in a while, as you're coming along here, you get longer and fuller. And it's, it's not as easy when you're on here, like I told you, it gets slick and moves. But you're going to be really happy and when you've learned that stroke to go on here because the canvas and all helps you have a little bit more control. You see that? Nice little strokes. I'm going to go right over my style. I'm not going to finish the whole tree before I wipe it off. Okay, so let's go. I need a little bit of burn umber in here, a little bit. Back to my sap. And see, I'm going to come out a little bit more. Come down the middle some. Um, 
Okay, so I'm going to stop and clean off <clears throat> the style real quick right there. More than I thought. All right. It's okay because you can paint over it with white, but it's just smarter to do it as you go. All right, and I got a little bit over here too. This is a good place where I'm going to put something heavy and dark that I'm going to just put this right there because this way we won't get it. We don't have to concentrate so much on that. All right, so now see that's a little light. I want to start getting a little bit darker. All right. So all from the, from the center trunk, all chiseled. And see, see how, you can see how I'm skipping areas. And then as you're down here, you won't see it because they're so much longer. You wouldn't see where as much, where they're not covered where the area is not covered because of the tree branch. But over here you will. And there are like pine boughs along there. Okay. So I love doing these trees because I think they come out so nice. Oh, we are doing mostly dark. But every once in a while, I will find myself picking up a little bit of citrus if I want to see, like in here, the ones that are coming towards me a little bit. But this is just a fun way to show you that we can add that little bit. But we really didn't in this painting because we put snow there instead. But just I'm just slipping this in so you could see. Look how fun that is. All right, where we just put a little bit of this. And now I'm going to cover it with snow. <laughs> Let's see how fun that makes that tree. So I'm going to go ahead and release my tape to show you that it makes it nice and clean. But guess what I didn't do? This is good. I like to show you when I don't do it perfect. I didn't rub that tape in, remember? It's an important step. you got to rub it in so that, look, it's perfect there. But right there, it wasn't down enough that it covered it. Okay, so now what I want to do is we are going to, I'm going to go paint the rest of mine and I'm going to have you stop and paint yours and we'll come back and we'll be ready for the next step. We're going to put some snow on. All right, so hopefully you had a good time with those trees. They're simple little strokes, but concentrating on size is hard sometimes. But I worked on mine pretty good, and hopefully yours are just like you wanted them. And the next step that we're going to do is we're going to go back to our teaching guide, and we're going to put some snow out here on top of these branches. And we're just going to tap, tap, tap. I'm not using the scruffy. I'm just uh, going back and forth with little bits of tap of this white. So I don't know if you can see it on there, but I'll come over here and show you. So I'm going to just put a little snow falling on top of those branches. See, heavier, and then it goes out lightly to the end of the branches. So that's what we're going to go do. We're going to have fun adding that. So just keep looking at your picture here. It shows you how it goes on right there, how it looks when it's supposed to be, the way it's supposed to be. Okay, so we're going to go get wicker white, and we're going to start right up here, and then we slowly come down. So it's just coming down from up here, just like the snow would fall, and then some would be at the very tip. All right, so we're just going to come in here and alternate where you put this from side to side. But I wouldn't do it on every branch that's coming out there. It looks better to put them here and there kind of randomly. 
and then we're going to come down along here and just go to each of your trees and tap on little beds getting smaller the higher you go but see if it's too thin it doesn't look as good I literally like the texture of it sitting on here on your branches okay all right put a little bit here but now let's go we're going to also flick a little bit of the snow here and there fly speck it so it looks like it's got snow it's kind of fun to watch this happen in between i tell you whatever i made those spaces in here and then you tap really little out to the edge of the tips of the branches. Okay, that got that's big. I'm gonna tap a little bit lighter right there. These are things like clouds and stuff. Whenever I paint them and then I see a snow scene my eyes are going to how the snowflakes fall or how how the snow is at the bottom of the trees that's what I catch myself doing and it's because we've we've opened our creative mind in a different way and I look at evergreen all the time now different types of evergreen and so I always save those pictures so I can see the different kinds of pine and the way that they look. I love, by the way, since I've lived in Florida my whole life, I love uh, seeing snow scenes. I might not love being in the snow, <laughs> but we will see. Okay, so now the last one to do is this little guy right here. And I put little teeny bits up here. Now, it's going to be a little bit different when we go to our branches, just like I was showing you on the reusable teaching guide. And the teaching guide, like I said, I don't know if I made that really clear, I just showed you how, is that we practice on it. And because this is a wonderful paint that adheres to lots of surfaces, I just want you to make sure that you clean them as you go. The beauty of them is like it's got the teacher at home with you. You have the teacher at home with you stroking right on my strokes, my actual size strokes, which makes it easier for you to duplicate it and put it right on your piece. So the beauty is that Plaid's doing these wonderful videos and we're using quality product like folk art multi-surface paint and our wonderful brushes and we're ready to go okay now what i want to do is i want to come now just like i was showing you where we put the snow sitting on these branches i always say they're like dead trees <laughs> people say no they're not dead so right down here on top of this area before we go to the branches i'm just having some snow drift down here and i wanted to do that real quick so i'm covering the bottom of that tree the evergreen so it looks like it's finished here and so i have some snow that falls over some that comes in here more i did add a little bit of prussian blue highlights on this a little bit later you'll see and it makes it look more realistic okay but make sure that you have texture in this also so right here we're going to come down i want to cover the base of that so that looks normal there you go. And then some on the rock. And when you put it on the rock, it kind of gets the base. Okay. All right. So let me remind you how the, we put that right on top of those branches. 
We had covered the stump and came down to the rock. See how the little bit of blue is going to show in there. All right, so let's come up here. Now I did put quite a bit like it would be sitting in here where the tree splits. A little bit out here. Lots of snow up in here. Sitting right on top of this branch. And right there. Did have a little bit more in here. Okay, so now I want to come in here and I want to put some more snow and the blue shading from the Prussian blue um, and put that in before I fly spec because then we'll have the wet specks of paint everywhere for the snow and it might be harder to do then. So I'm going to go ahead and use the 12 to go in here and I'm going to go across. Now what I did was I have a misty area in the back, but now I'm going to make it a little stronger. We had put the white glaze on top and I'm going to come across here, wicker white, and I am going to pick up a touch of moon yellow with wicker white. Oops, that's a little bit more than I wanted. Because on snow, you would see the glistening of the sun peeping through. All right, and then I want to come all under this, um, the tree, the evergreens, and use some of the Prussian blue. So I'm going to get a little bit of Prussian blue, and you can see I'm going to work it into the white over there. And we're going to put a little bit of blue in here. Let's get some more Prussian. Prussian blue here. All right, so I'm going to come and make it look like it comes from underneath this tree and this tree. In some areas, I want it a little bit darker than others, but the snow drift's pulling this way. All right, and it came across here. Okay. All right, now I'm going to get some floating medium and that blue. And I want to come across here because I can come and make stronger blue later. I'm just going to use that blue to pull across and the direction I want to head. Okay, so I noticed one thing I did. I want to show you how easy it is to come in there and move it. One thing I did was I covered this one tree branch with blue. Let's take that off a little bit. Got bubbles. There we go. Same thing here. Or it's really easy. What you can then do is I can grab a little bit of green and put it right over it because I did right there too. All right. So now what makes this look good also is if I take the wicker white and I lightly, lightly, just on the tip of that brush, have some white streaks coming down. Just lay some of that in there. All right, and to finish it off, I still want it richer. So I'm going to come up with a little bit darker blue in here. We're going to come back and float also. So some of this blue here you can do when we float around the edges and get some darker in here. There we go. All right, I also, while I have that Prussian blue, 
I'm just going to touch a few spots of this thin blue here and there. for some depth and then I'm going to float some of that blue along the edge here when we get to our next step. Let's see, that's, a, well, that's when you can get a darker, richer color when you've got the sap and it just brings in a lot of nice color in there later. Okay, so what I want to do before we move to our next step is I do want to do some fly specking in here to get this fun snow effect. And it just, it, I put it, can do it heavier in some areas, lighter than others, I guess light there. And I also, after I fly spec it, I'm gonna let it dry for a few minutes and we're gonna work on showing you how to put these words right in that spot there. Let's stay home and all warm and cozy, right? Okay, so I'm gonna use the plate that we used earlier with wicker white and floating medium, but we're not gonna use the floating medium, we're gonna use water, and we're gonna use a toothbrush, and we're going to pick up our water, and it's gonna be a lot of water, and we're going to move it around into the paint, and now I don't want it watery, totally watery, but we do want it thin enough that it flicks like a fly specking snow that we're looking for. So I'm just going to come here and show you that I'm just gonna flick, little flicks there, until I'm happy with the look that I'm getting. But let me show you a little trick. We don't want to get it outside of our area here. So what I will just sometimes take a paper towel and when I'm flicking it, it on this side, I can just lay this here. All right, get some of this paint and our mix here. And then you're just gonna take your thumb and you're going to flick and decide how much you want it. Like I can do less or more and cover the tree a little bit more. Oh, and then make sure I just wipe off as I go. All right, so I could come up here a little bit. And some of this over here, I want it heavier right in here, but we are gonna put the lettering, so we're gonna put our saying over there. Okay, I'm gonna turn it over and lay it on this side. Keep getting paint. And sometimes I have to go get more water and work on my white. See, look how fun that looks when it's down in the, the snow banks. That fun? And as long as you wipe it right away, you can get this off. Okay. Now's a good time for you to stop and go ahead and dry your painting because now we're going to put all of our crossbars and white molding onto the window. So take a second, uh, finish your flicking of, of the fly specking and, or the snow, and let's um, dry it and come back and we'll be ready. So the next step we're going to do is come in and paint our white styles. Now you can, after you've dried all this, you can retrace them if you don't see them. I can see mine pretty well, so that's up to you. There are some areas right in here where um, you might should retrace that area some. But I'm going to turn this around so I can start painting in here and let you see. There again, you can tape the sides and you can even tape the middle. If you want, let me show you really quick. If you were taping this, especially if you're a beginner and you're not sure where to go with this, you can come all the way down. All right, and touch here and touch there. Remember, we've got to rub this well. I use my nails sometimes, but you might want to use a little scraper on there. And we're gonna go on the other side and show you that we're gonna come right there, along here, 
okay? And then after we get through and it's totally dry, you can tape the other sides, come down the other side with this. So let's go ahead and go down this side while I've got it laid out here. All right, right here to right there. Okay, so one more strip that I would do right here, but you would do it all the way around in stages, okay guys? But I am coming right here to there. Okay, so this is the best way for me because I don't have a steady hand. Just to let you know, as I was working with them, I found when I taped, it was a lot better as long as I made sure that I rubbed really well and the tape, the painter's tape is down really well. All right, so I still have lots of white paint right here with my three quarter inch brush. I'm using this wicker white and not thinned out wicker white, but a nice coat of um, fresh wicker white that has not been mixed with floating medium. Okay, so you can even leave that there for a few minutes. Let me get some more wicker white. And we like to pull the tape as soon as possible. But I sometimes like to come right there and coat it one more time. Okay. Now you can use a 12 flat, but I found that I get a nicer even coat with a three quarter. But look how good that is. It goes all the way up to the top there in the middle. I'm gonna come right here again and put a nice second coat because that first coat's not very dry by now, so you're safe. And then I'm gonna go ahead and you know, one thing people try to do is they use this piece of tape and move it to the other side. Please don't do that. Just throw your tape away because it will just most times mess you up and get white paint over there. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Isn't that nice? This is what Miss Donna needs all the time is a way to tape it and have a nice edge there. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Now what I want is for you to blow dry each one of those that are going vertical, totally dry. Then you can start taping opposite of that and get all of your straight lines. And then you're gonna work on these little slats in between here. And then you're gonna work on your edges here. Now this will be the only place you have to have a very steady hand and stay right on top of that using the chisel. Don't try to put it down flat. So you guys go work on that and we can, we'll come back. We will have all of those styles ready. Okay, welcome back. And I have gone a couple of steps ahead of you. The first thing I need to make sure is that everybody dried their piece so that we're ready for the next steps. And that's a, the fun detail to give it depth. We're gonna float some outer edges around the window and around the window glass panes. So I'm gonna turn this around so that I can get up here into this detail work here. And I went ahead and put out Prussian blue licorice and some floating medium and I'm going to use a 12 flat to do the smaller detail. So what we do first when we're floating, floating is really fun, really simple. There's a couple things I want to share with you that we don't, we're not using water. It's easier to use our floating medium. So it's the folk art floating medium. It's perfect for working with our multi-surface paint. I'm going to make a little dampened paper towel so I can wipe off if I don't happen to like how my floating went or if I get too strong, too heavy on the color. All right, so um, the key is when you're floating is that we're gonna fill our brush with floating medium. Now we don't want it gooped up like tons on here. We want to flatten it out and just pick it from the edge of the puddle of floating medium. And then we want to go to the edge always of your puddle of paint color. And we're using the Prussian blue right now. And I don't want it to just be wimpy. I want to get a strong amount of 
uh, the Prussian blue, but I go over it a few times, so I'm pushing the color back to the edge. You see that? So if you get if you get this all carried away out to here, it's not going to look good. So I want you to take and go way back here to the puddle again. And let me tell you why it's not going to look good, because look at what happens. You can see the blue from here to here. And all we want to do is take and push the blue up against the window style so it's real tight on the edge. And so it's not wimpy like that. It's a stronger but up against the edge. All right, not wide. So this is a really fun technique, but you've got to just do it right, all right? So floating medium, and you can clean this brush out every once in a while if you feel like you're not getting a good blend on here, or if you've got a mucky brush. So I'm gonna take and pull this in here. You can go both ways. Okay, and the beauty is, if I don't like it, remember I told you you can just wipe it off. All right, so I don't want you to be fearful. <laughs> this is really simple with this beautiful medium. All right, so we're going to come right here. The brush is flat, and we have a nice blue blend on there. We're going to pick up a little bit more floating medium and pick up the Prussian blue again. And this brush is going to be flat as we're stroking. All right, so a little trick I want to share with you is that it's easier to skip this part right here and go to the next one until this is dry, then we can go right on top of it, okay? So I'm gonna get floating medium, a little bit more Prussian blue, and I'm just gonna do the left side here. And then I can come back, like I said, and do a better coat. Long, smooth stroke, all right? And then we're going to come this way. And I don't want to hit it right here because then it's going to take off that, that that I've already floated. Okay, so pick up a little bit more. I'm going to turn it all the way around, guys, so I can pull from the other way. So the key is that you're going to try to pull this in a comfortable direction. So whether you're a lefty or a righty, whichever way is comfortable for you to pull, just move your canvas. The most asked question to me is, can I move my canvas? Can I turn it around? And of course you can. All right, so I know already the way I'm pulling, I'm not comfortable here and I'm not on that edge because I would usually put this up towards me, okay? But I'm trying to be in position so you guys see well. And see, I can come all the way down here, but as I'm coming down, I'm gonna be into that wet area. So we can come right here, back and get some of this side done that I couldn't do before. All right, a little bit more here, which I did earlier, but I wanna put a little teeny bit more there. And let's start right here now because it's set for a few minutes. And we're going to pull it right along here. All right, and then we can pull from there. Now let's do inside the window pane, the four panes that we have here. Okay, so I need a little bit more medium. Remember the floating medium, we're gonna go flat and we're gonna pull it. Floating medium, Prussian blue. Okay, 
Okay, now as we come down over these trees, I'm going to pick up more blue. And be a little bit heavier, but you don't have to be heavy the first time you do it. You can just come back and get a little bit richer again later. All right, but what I want to do, can you see I've got that one little spot here I'm not happy with? Or maybe I've got more than one little spot when I put it where I can see it better. Okay, all right, so what's going to happen is I'm going to let this dry and I'm going to finish going around each one of these panes. But what's going to happen down here as we're stroking, remember, is where I want to get heavier here. And one of the ways to get heavier that I liked was taking a teeny bit of licorice and the blue. Now, I got too much licorice, so I've got lots of licorice here. I wanted to wash this brush, get floating medium, and come in here to the licorice and the Prussian blue, okay? And let me turn this so hopefully you can see this better. <laughs> I'm trying to, <laughs> sorry. I'm gonna turn this this way, and then we're gonna get right in here easier. Right, a little bit in here. And then I wanna, um, just on the outside edges is where I'm getting the heavier, bringing a teeny bit of licorice into my Prussian Blue. And it gives you a really nice look. Now I am turning that slightly and it needs to be flatter. The brush is flatter. Okay. So right along here is where I want to get a deeper color on the outside edges. So I'm doing the floating medium, the Prussian blue with the licorice, and I am just wanted it a little bit darker. But like I said, the first stroke down here, don't worry, you can just do a light coat. And then it's easier to come and darken and continue to darken it. All right, right along here. Get it stronger. See how I can get stronger in here? All right, and then I want it stronger right on this outside edge here. Just where the tree is, I didn't do up there as much. And then we're going to come along here. Medium, floating medium, and Prussian blue. But remember, it's easier when you're pulling this towards you. Okay, and then back up. So now I'm going to continue doing this, and I, I would like you to pause your video and then go back and do all of the blue part and be ready to come in and finish some of the black shading next. So I'll see you in a few minutes. All right, so now we're back and we're ready to add our licorice around here. So I am going to take floating medium on my three-quarter flat instead of my 12 flat and I'm going to work in a little bit of licorice. Not a lot, Donna, a little bit. And I I really like floating with a larger brush and I think you can get more success with it. But I'm, on this I love that I can run my finger along the canvas and I just hold my brush steady. So more licorice. We have plenty of ugh, we have plenty of floating medium. Okay, so I'm going to come over here and make sure I don't have licorice in the wrong place. All right, there. So we have floating medium and licorice. My fingers running on the outside edge, and we're going to lay this brush as flat as we could lay it to go around. All right. 
we're going to get more floating medium and more licorice. Finger on the outside edge. So you get it all steady, and then when it's all where you want it to be, you are going to pull your little finger, and it's going to pull all the way up. But then I need to go in here and clean this up a little bit and go over it sometimes if the licorice isn't covering it well. All right. And this is going to give you a little bit of depth and make it look like it's uh, sticking, uh, like the moldings coming out from the wall, the windows in more. Okay. And you can go back a little bit. All right. So as we're coming around, I found that if I start here and I try to pull smoothly in a curve, it depends on how you have your arm and whether you can pull it around easily or not, okay? And then I just nick that, so I'm just going to touch that really quick. And this is, while well, this is still wet, is the time you would go and check it. And clean it up a little bit. All right, right down here in the corner, I kept getting a little bit bigger and bigger, or in a little bit more and a little bit more. So that's the thing you have to be careful about because as you're doing this, uh, as you're cleaning it up and working on it, you can go, I'm going to cover it a little bit more, a little bit more. And before you know it, you've lost all your size. I can tell you through experience. You lose all the size of your molding because you covered and covered and covered. Now, last thing I want to show you before we do our lettering is to shade the corners. And I just thought um, that for you to put that on there just finishes a piece sometimes. So we are going to take and dry brush a little bit of color into the corners all right and i would do the upper outside edges and take some of that paint off take it off and then work it on work it in here one so you're going to do all four corners and then we're going to be ready to put our lettering in so let's go have a lettering lesson all right so i'm going to put this to the side and let's pull out our steps to be able to put let's stay home. Okay, let's look at the lettering that we're using. There's lots of lettering for you to pick through, and this is in the hometown kit. So these are templates ready for you. So let's stay home is what we decided to use. And I just wanted to share with you that we're using a permanent marker. We're going to tape it down so that we have it right where we want it to trace this all out. All right. And you're going to use the permanent marker. I just moved the white. All right. There we go. We're going to use a permanent marker and trace each letter out. Then what we're going to do now that we've traced it on the tracing paper, we're going to take and we laid it right here and then use graphite paper. And when we use the graphite paper, guys, we're going to put, like I showed you before, the shiny side down and we're going to use our stylus again. And we're going to take and trace all those little letters. Now, the key to lettering looking beautiful, just like the window styles, was that we are very careful about tracing. And the more even and clean that you trace, and then it's easier to paint, OK? So and have a nice finished product. So what I'm going to do is I'm pulling this off and moving our template away so I don't mess that up. You want to keep everything nice and clean so you can use them over and over. All right. So now what's happened on here is this was pretty easy because we just took the two script liner and our licorice. All right. And we are going to make it a little inky. 
Okay, roll the brush to script liner. All right, and all we did was stroke around those and around the edges and filled in the middle and that's an easy lettering to go on to our piece because lots of times we did all kinds of added shading and detail and, and ombre but this is going to be really easy for you because what we're going to do is remember I said we pull this all towards you all right now I like turning it sideways because I can pull it this way and then I'm going to come across the bottoms. All right. And then turn it so I can go up. And we're just going to be breaking this into little steps and being very careful to fill in those little teeny areas and make really nice lettering. Now, what I'm excited about is we worked all year doing fun letters and I'm excited to see, I hope you're excited to see, I've seen myself grow with learning how to letter better, letter better. <laughs> okay, so we're going to come right in. And if we break it down to, we, we're going around and pulling towards you instead of pushing away. See how I'm pulling towards me on this let. And then I break it and do the curve. Okay. And then we're going to curve this way, but see I'm still pulling it towards me. So whichever hand you are, lefty or righty, just make sure you break that down so it's easy for you. I'm going to pick up and touch up the little spots that I went out of, all right, or I didn't quite cover. And we're going to finish up let's by doing every little area that we've traced are transferred. All right, see the box right here to get the straight. Now, so this is a pretty easy one to finish off our December piece and make sure you trace it on there really nice and you're ready to hang it on your wall when you're done. Just think, guys, this would be such a beautiful gift for somebody during this holiday season. And during the December when it's wintry, and can you imagine their smile when they see this piece? I think you're going to smile. You probably don't want to give it away. You want to hang it on your wall. So wasn't that fun? Simple lettering, very clean and pretty to finish our piece. And I love using different types of styles of lettering also and mixing them together. So there we go. Wasn't that fun? I loved having the opportunity to teach you how to do a landscape working from the back where it's misty and back in the forest with the snow all the way up to the bright vivid trees and we learned a few different trees didn't we? And how to put snow everywhere and how to flick some with a toothbrush. Those are all kinds of tricks that you now know. Isn't that fun? I also would love to share with you now that you've been painting with us, or if you haven't painted with us until today, to go check out more painting that we do and more opportunities that Plaid has for you. We have at Let's Paint so many artists, beautiful painters and teachers like Andy Jones and Chris Williams that are sharing wonderful lessons also with you besides Hook Art One Stroke. Now, there is a Facebook group that I'd like you to join and it is Let's Paint with Plaid and you're going to love being able to take your pictures and go share them on that group. So what I'd like you to do is tag hashtag Let's Paint Challenge and share your paintings with everybody else because we love seeing you grow your paintings with us. All right, so 
There's also something I know many of you are new and you might have not seen all the lessons all year. We have 12 lessons and for you to go see those lessons that I've taught for hometown, please go to platonline.com forward slash let's paint and then click on hometown and go see that kit. And I can't wait to see those pictures. So please share them, I'll be waiting. So until next time, let's paint.